Hello and welcome to the ZAM walkthrough for the structure of matter. So all the topics do with heating, cooling, um, atomic structure and so on. So let's get started. According to kinetic theory, all matter is made up of small particles. The particles are constantly moving. Diagram one shows how the particles may be arranged in a solid. One kilogram of gas has a much larger volume than one kilogram of solid. Use kinetic theory to explain why. So kinetic theory, this isn't going to get you any marks, but kinetic theory sometimes confuses people. All that means is movement theory. All right, movement of what? Movement of atoms. All right, so all it's saying is use the motion of atoms and what you know about how atoms move to explain why gas has a much larger volume than one kilogram of solid. So let's start by describing the picture. So a solid, so the atoms are fixed with strong bonds in regular uh, rows or in a regular arrangement. They are close together. In a gas, the atoms have a lot more energy. They are um, free to move um, about and they are not fixed in position. Okay, uh, You could say on average they are far apart and uh, moving fast, Okay, but the key bit is on average if you're going to say that because occasionally a couple of gas molecules are close together and occasionally you know, sometimes they are moving slowly as well. Um, but that should uh, be enough to get you the marks. Part B, how can you tell from diagram two that this liquid is evaporating? Okay, so what, is, what do we mean by evaporating? So evaporating is a liquid gas. So, in the diagram, uh, some molecules or some particles are shown leaving the surface of the liquid. And what shows them doing that is the arrows. Okay, so it's purely, it's only one moment, it's purely describing this diagram, right? We can clearly see some of them are leaving the surface, which means they're turning from the liquid into a gas and gas is of course free to move anywhere. Part II. The temperature of the liquid in the container decreases as the liquid evaporates. Use kinetic theory to explain why. So again use the motion of the particles to explain why. So particles moving the fastest and so with the most energy. Okay, obviously if they're moving fastest, they must have the most energy. Are the particles leaving the container? So the only particles remaining are the ones with lower energy, and lower energy equals lower temperature. Okay, I might just put kinetic in there as well that's what we're really talking about movement energy kinetic energy so the most energetic particles leave the hot particles leave effectively and it leaves only the cold ones behind so the overall energy of the, the substance decreases the energy is decreasing the temperature is decreasing right? just like if what you sweat to keep cool like you've learned in biology or if you put water on you it's cool because it evaporates and again takes the energy from the surface it takes your heat energy and it transfers it away um, into its movement. Okay, question two. A student wants to calculate uh, the density of two objects shown in the figure below. Describe the methods that the student could use to calculate the densities of the two object objects. So we've got two things to do, for six marks. So the first thing I would always do in these uh, kind of questions is to write down the formula um, density. All right, and then that will sort of help me rem remind myself what else I, I should say, what I need to measure. So density is mass divided by volume. 
So let's do the metal cube. So what do I need to do? I need to measure the mass using, what do I use? A mass balance. And I need to measure uh, the lengths of each side using a ruler and then volume equals length times height times width okay and then use the density formula to work out the density so it's super easy we're just going to measure it with a ruler uh, and put it on, a, on a mass balance work out its density that way the statue is a little bit trickier okay so the mass is easy mass can be found using a mass balance all right but the volume is a bit trickier uh right the the volume is a little bit trickier because we can't just measure the height the width and the depth as it's not a regular shape it's an irregular shape so what do we need to do for the volume? Well, firstly, we need to fill up a container uh, full of water. Uh, and then we're gonna put the statue in. Then we are going to uh, catch the water that spills out uh, in a measuring cylinder. Uh, and this is the volume of the statue. Okay, this is the practical you did in class. You displace some water using um, a container, you could say a beaker, you could say a Eureka can, and you catch the water, and that's the volume of the statue. Now, when you use a measuring cylinder, you're going to get it in milliliters. How do we convert that into um, a volume? Well, it one milliliter is one centimeter cubed so that's super easy uh, and then again density uh, is calculated by dividing the mass by the volume okay so super easy you say the formula you're going to use you then say how you're going to measure each uh thing in the formula and what piece of equipment you're going to use so this here will get you all six marks Question three, solid, liquid, and gas are three different states of matter. Describe the difference between the solid and gas states in terms of the arrangement and movement of the particles. We've, we've, done, we've done this one already. This was the first question. Uh, so gas, uh, the particles have uh, a lot of energy, no fixed structure, uh, free to move about. Uh, we could say random speeds, random directions, always good to give extra detail. Uh, solid, oops, can't spell. Uh, solid is a regular fixed arrangement of um, particles or atoms. Uh, lower energy than the solid, so any atoms have... Uh, less energy than um, a gas and what do the particles do they vibrate about a fixed position that's important okay they only move they do move but they just vibrate left and right or up and down or to back about a fixed position whereas in a gas the particles are free to move anywhere part b what is meant by the specific latent heat of vaporization so this is the standard definition it's the energy required to change one kilogram of material or substance, maybe substance from a liquid to a uh, gas at a constant temperature. A okay, standard definition you need to learn. If it had said fusion, then that's solids to liquid, but it says vaporization, so that's liquid to a gas. Okay, part C. Uh, while, while a kettle boils, this much mass of water changes to steam, calculate the amount of energy required for this change. So if you remember this definition, 
by it's super easy now you could uh look up on the formula sheet the formula you but you actually don't need to you just need to remember this definition although actually you can even kind of cheat you can even look at the units of the vaporization of water and figure it out okay so the energy required um is the mass times by the specific latent heat of vaporization okay so if i take joules divided by kilogram and i times it by kilograms times it by the mass i get joules which means i get energy so actually you can work it out just from this number alone so let's put the uh, numbers in 0.018 kilograms times by 2.3 times 10 to the 6 joules uh, per kilogram. All right, let's type that into our calculator. Four one four hundred joules. All right, part C. Uh, sorry, part D. The graph showing how temperature varies with time for a substance as it's heated, it's not drawn to scale. What is happening in AB and BC? So AB, uh, it's changing state at a constant temperature. Um, what's going on? Well, it's changing state here and it's changing state here, isn't it? So this must be uh, solid solid to liquid, liquid, liquid to gas. And it, so it's going from a solid to a liquid. Uh, BC, uh, what is it doing? The temperature is increasing. Uh, the liquid is being heated or is um, increasing. All right. Uh, if they asked you what was happening down here, the solid is increasing in temperature. If they asked you what was happening up here, it's changing from a liquid to a gas. If they said, um, you know, what's happening to the motion of the particles, they're vibrating uh, back and forwards with more energy. Uh, the bonds are breaking here. The liquid is moving around, the particles move around with more energy. Uh, and here, the bonds are breaking between the liquid and the gas, but they haven't actually asked for that. Okay, the figure below shows a balloon filled with helium gas. Describe the movement of the particles of the helium gas inside a balloon. So what's really important when you're describing gas motion is it's random. Uh, and we can see uh, from the arrows, what have we got? We've got a range of speeds and a range of directions. Okay, so it's random motion overall. What does random mean? It's a range of speeds, range of directions purely from the arrow. What name is given to the total kinetic energy and potential energy of all the particles of the helium gas? That's known as the internal energy. Okay, internal is kinetic plus potential. Write down the equation which links density, mass, and volume. We've already done this. Density equals uh, mass divided by volume. Um, calculate the density of helium. Well, that's going to be super easy, isn't it? Um, so density is mass over volume, so 0 0.00254 divided by 0 0.0141. So let's turn in our calculator. Not point not one four one. That gives us naught point one uh, eight zero. So we'll just go to two significant figures. What's the correct unit? Well, we've taken mass, we've divided it by volume. Uh, we've got kilograms and meters cubed, so it must be kilograms uh, per meter cubed. Yeah. All right. Final question. There is a temperature change of three degrees Celsius in a room when 1.5 kilograms of water flows through a radiator each second. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. 
calculate the amount of energy given to the room by 1.5 kilograms of water as it passes through the radiator, show you're working right down the unit. So specific heat capacity is the energy required to heat uh, to increase the temperature of one kilogram of uh, substance by one uh, degree Celsius or one, one degree Kelvin, um, but one degree Celsius. So this definition really important. You need to learn this definition. And from that, you can basically figure everything out. So now if we want a formula, so energy required or energy transferred equals mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. OK, this equation is given to you on the formula sheet. And then it says calculate the amount of energy given to the room by 1.5 kilograms. So 1.5 kilograms times by the specific heat capacity. What's the specific heat capacity? What it tells us here, it tells us that it's 4,200. And what's the temperature change? Uh, there was a temperature change of three degrees Celsius times three degrees Celsius. So times that all together, and what do we get? 1.5 times 4,200 times three, that's 1,000, or sorry, 18,900 joules. Easy three marks. Last part, the radiator has air trapped in it. The heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. The heat capacity of air is a third of water. Calculate the specific heat capacity of air. So what's going on here? It's only one mark, so it's not as hard as you think it is. So the radiator has air trapped in it. So So um, all we need to do, 4,200 divided by three to get our answer. Joules uh, per kilogram uh, per degree Celsius, okay? Because uh, it tells us, doesn't it, it's a third of that of water. So super easy question. Can you read the question? Can you divide by three. Uh, and that is the end of the questions on matter.